Welcome to Experts Unleashed, a podcast that aims to uncover how professionals and entrepreneurs transform their experience into income while making a positive impact in the world. I'm your host, Joel Irway, and over the past four years, I've helped entrepreneurs develop and launch their expert-based businesses to grow past six and seven figures per year. Now, a professional expert serves their community through paid training, education, or service, and this podcast will show you how to design and execute your plan to become a six- or seven-figure expert without a big team. So, let's get started. Hey, what's going on, experts? It's Joel here, and you are in for an absolutely special episode today. So, I just got off my interview with the fascinating, the extremely intelligent Ron Reich. Ron and I go back quite a few months, at least six or seven months ago when we first met. I've been following him on social media for a while, but I asked him to join us on this episode because Ron has an incredible backstory, an incredible journey from corporate lawyer to dating advice to martial arts and ultimately Now he is a consultant to six and seven figure digital marketing launches. So I wanted him to hop on, explain his journey and explain how he was able to spot and seize new opportunities throughout his career as an entrepreneur. You are absolutely going to love this episode. So without further ado, let's jump right in and get to Ron's interview. Hey everybody, it's Joel here and welcome to another episode of Experts Unleashed. And I am super pumped, super excited to have a very special guest on today, somebody who I've talked to a bunch and I've seen him doing just amazing things in the online entrepreneurship space and the um, digital marketing space. We've connected a few times and I'm very, very excited to have him share his story and his knowledge with you and specifically his journey and how he's been able to spot and create opportunities throughout his entrepreneurial career. So our very special guest today is Ron Reich. Ron, welcome to the show, man. Hey, Joel. How's it going? Thanks so much for having me and for that very enthusiastic introduction. I got (laughs) to keep up with your enthusiasm. Yeah, man. Well, I got to get the audience excited, man, because I really am excited. I'm excited to chat with you and to have you share your story. And so give us a quick 60-second introduction of who you are, who is the man, the myth, the legend, and what is your superpower in the digital marketing space? Gotcha. My name is Ron Reich. And these days, I primarily work as a business growth and launch strategist, pretty much for experts, authors, coaches, and those kinds of people. For the last couple of years, I've worked behind the scenes on many of the big seven-figure and multi-seven-figure launches. And then about a year ago, I started actually putting myself out there at a little more front facing and started doing workshops and creating more content to help even more people through launches and other marketing strategies. My belief is scaling a business through marketing is kind of the best way to get from six figure range or going to seven figures. So typically my thing is helping them scale through marketing. So what's fascinating about your specialty is launches are a big deal meaning they can be hugely impactful to somebody's business, but they're a lot of work, right? So why would somebody consider doing a launch? What is it about a launch that you find is like the single most valuable element? So essentially, one thing that, as you may know, I'm very passionate about this topic, but the way I think of a launch really is a marketing event. It is an event that's happening in real time that essentially has a beginning, middle, and an end. So one of the reasons why I think people should be doing promotions, aka marketing events, is because that is just how smart business is done. If you look at the most successful companies in history, like Apple, for example, I believe it's the most valuable company in history, they're famous for their launches. If you look at like the movie industry, when a new movie comes out, like Avengers Infinity War, if you look at the structure of that, it pretty much was similar to the structure of what we would do in the marketing world as a launch. And then if you look at Netflix, for example, they're always releasing, aka launching a new series every day, every week, essentially. So that's one reason why launches are so important. These days, everybody's attention is so scattered. 
And so the only way to really get someone's attention and stand out is actually to be super duper relevant in real time, which is that's why I believe real time marketing is so important. If you really want to stand out in the marketplace, again, because of all the noise out there, there really isn't a better way to do it than with a launch. Most of the people we work with, experts of various types, the three primary things that they're looking for would be impact, income, and freedom, essentially. Specifically when it comes to impact, if you look at the biggest people, the people that we all kind of know and follow, they all at some point did some kind of big launch to really put themselves on the map. There are a lot of people that make as much money or more money than some of these bigger experts, but they're not quite making as big of an impact. At least that's not as known. So those would be my quick thoughts on that. I want to get this right. It was impact, freedom, income. Yeah, of course. Yeah, impact, income, and freedom, right? And you did mention, you know, there are people who make more money when they don't do launches. However, they don't make the impact. And I think that's, as I've analyzed, because I've considered doing launches in the past and I'm still considering it, but it just scares mm-hmm. me because they're big. <laughs> like, they, like and I'm, I'm a very simple person, but I get it now. This is really why somebody would want to consider doing a launch if they really want to make a huge impact, right? Yeah, it's like the impact and just getting that extra elevation in the marketplace, kind of like getting you that extra level of celebrity. There's quite a few people like that who'd be in a position like yours. They're very well positioned, but if they want to like get to that other level of exposure and impact and visibility and all the other benefits that come with that, in my opinion, some kind of big event is the way that's really going to make a splash in the marketplace. Love it, dude. Makes total sense. So I want to ask you this question about what you believe your primary skill set is with launches because in a launch it's a big freaking deal there is so many moving parts and when i look at it from the outside i'm like man if i were to consult with somebody on putting together a launch who do i want to consult with because there's so many pieces i've been in the webinar agency in my main business i've been parts of launches just working on the webinars but there's so much mm-hmm. more there's marketing strategy what's your strategy how are you going to get those people in and then push them through the sequence What would you say is your superpower with the launch strategy? Is it more marketing strategy or is it more organizational saying, okay, here's how you get affiliates. Here's how you tie it all together. Here's how you piece it all together. Did that question make sense? Yeah, I totally get the question. And it's funny you should mention that. Okay, so two of my general superpowers, things that I'm really good at would be essentially making marketing happen, getting things done. This is about execution, managing projects and things along those lines. One of my other real superpowers, I guess you could say, would be related to marketing, but really is engineering marketing campaigns Mm -hmm. from a marketing standpoint, including the messaging, the sequencing, and things like that. So really, the thing that makes me, I guess, unique is the fact that I can kind of mesh those two things. From the marketing side, that's mainly what I do these days, as well as the project management side, I can teach them how to execute a launch and how to keep all the things going as well as on the affiliate side, I can show them how to recruit affiliates as well as get affiliates to actually promote and things like that. Those are my unicorn qualities when it comes to launches. Awesome, man. So you are the king of launches. That's what I know you for. But to get to this specific level, there is obviously a story behind this of how you got started in this space. Like what ultimately led you to become a launch expert? Because this is super, 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 super (laughs) niche. Right. It's like when people talk to me, like, wow, man, you specialize in (laughs) webinars, right? That's really, really niche. Take me back through the genesis of your entrepreneurial career. Like, let's rewind it and let's tell the journey of Ron and how you got to this point. So tell me where this all started. Yeah. So I actually first found out about online marketing back, I think it was my second year of law school. I was actually a lawyer in the past life. And I kind of knew that I never really wanted to be a lawyer deep down. I kind of ended up going to law school just because I didn't want to get a real job coming out of college. So I kind of got interested in sales and things like that. And that's when actually when I stumbled upon this guy, Dan Kennedy, and I got just really into his stuff. And that's what turned me on to this idea of information marketing. The idea was like selling information, making money out of it so you didn't have to work really hard. I kind of decided when I was in law school that I wanted to do that. And so I ended up actually launching my first information product on how to pass the bar exam and how to actually do good in law school. That's kind of how I started. And then I ended up partnering with a guy who was a dating expert. And we actually launched a business in the uh, relationship space in late 2008. 
my first big success actually was a launch that I've told this story uh, before. I should have done about $250,000 in revenue, but ended up doing about $150,000 because on the first day of the launch, the open card fade, our merchant account wasn't actually set up right. We actually didn't have a merchant account. We just had a gateway, if you guys know what I'm talking about. So we ended up losing about $100,000 in sales. That was a kind of a good early lesson as an entrepreneur. That was my primary business that I focused on for five or six years. The way that business worked is we were never really that great at bringing on new customers. To be honest, that was not really our strength, but we were very prolific and we were really good about just cranking out marketing promotions. So essentially with that business, basically once a month at least, we would do a new marketing promotion. We kind of created this machine. That's what really helped me learn my craft in a lot of ways. Then I ended up getting kind of bored, not bored, but for many reasons, I got bored and jaded with that business. So I wanted to get into a new niche and actually I launched a new business in the uh, dog training space. So what I did with that business, I took a lot of what I knew about creating these marketing promotions and I applied them to this new market. And the thing that was a little bit different here was, I mean, obviously they're quite different niches, but the other thing that was really different as well was that my dating business was mainly driven by affiliate traffic. Whereas my dog training space, there was actually no affiliates. So it was all dependent on cold traffic. And that business, that's where I really learned the cold traffic game and optimized cold traffic funnels. And I was still kind of doing these little promotions slash launches on a regular basis in that business as well. At the time when I was working on actually both those businesses, my mentor was a guy by the name of Ryan Levesque, author of the book Ask, who I'm sure some of your listeners are familiar with. He was my mentor, helped me kind of grow each of those businesses. And this was around in late 2014. This is when he was kind of really starting to gain some momentum. His book was about to come out and he was coming out from behind the scenes in his own business. And he was growing really, really fast. That's when he asked me to come in and help him with some of his marketing. So I basically spent a couple of years being his marketing director. And that's when I got involved in running some of these really, really big launches. Like our most successful launch did like over $3.3 million in revenue. And that's when I got more connected to the online education space, just met more people and saw how these super duper multi-million dollar launch, how those were happening and participating in them. I was planning on doing consulting. When I started, I had one or two consulting clients. And I didn't really know exactly what people wanted me to consult with them on, I should say. But the thing that really came up and the thing that I really liked a lot that people were asking me about the most was basically launches. And so because of that, I essentially became known as the super duper <laughs> launch king, as you yep. like to say. So what's fascinating about that, these different milestones that I see, and you said something about launches specifically, like coming out from behind the scenes, which I really love that from a marketing angle. It's when you're ready to come out, it's ready for a launch, right? When Ryan Levesque was ready to come out, that's why he did a launch. But I digress. At where I was going with this thought process here was all of these different pillars, they build up on each other, right? You said you were going to law school and you got introduced to Dan Kennedy, who's the godfather of direct response marketing. He introduced you to the world of information marketing, selling your information for experience. And I didn't know that you were actually going to school while you'd completed law school. I had no idea about that. If you wouldn't mind, I would love to dive into that a little bit because what's fascinating is your first product, how to pass the bar exam, is very similar to my first product in the engineering niche, which was how to pass the engineering licensing exam. Oh, oh wow. That's so crazy. Oh, wow. That's, that's hilarious. So you graduated from law school and what's happening? You said you got introduced to sales, but like out of curiosity, what type of lawyer were you? I basically did consumer law. This was during the financial crisis years. This was 2007, 2008. And 80% of my cases, I represented people that owed money to credit card companies. The other 20%, we actually sued and went after credit companies and collection agencies for harassment. And those cases were a lot more fun. So you're going through and you said you didn't really enjoy this, right? I mean, what got you to start to look elsewhere? Because what I love learning about as I talk to other business owners and entrepreneurs, is if we go through school, sometimes we go through master's or doctorate program, or for you, it's a law school, right? So we spend a lot of time focusing on this one specific path, a lot of time and money. And then we realize, man, this isn't really what I want to do, right? How soon after you graduated law school did you start having those thoughts? Yeah, as I kind of mentioned before, I actually found out about Dan Kennedy while I was in law school. I think the wheels were already turning then. And I think with me, I'm kind of a normal dude, but it's always kind of looking to do things a little bit differently, looking to get an edge, kind of like all entrepreneurs are in a lot of ways. 
So I think early on, even when I started working as a lawyer after law school, I kind of knew deep down that being a lawyer was not for me. I was already planning my escape path. That Mm -hmm. makes sense. More or less every day after work, I would spend a few hours on my other information businesses. Mm -hmm. So I tried the um, bar exam course for a little while. Where did you get that idea? The how to pass the bar exam? One where you're like, oh, this is going to be my first product. And actually, this is fine. I haven't actually talked about this. So I remember a while ago in one of these old Dan Kennedy CDs, he mentions the power of niching, right? And he mentioned like, you don't want to have a general time management course. It's better to have time management for lawyers, time management for doctors or whatever. So I was like, oh, that makes sense. And so because of that, I'm going to do time management for law students because that's the thing I knew about. And then I later on figured out that how to pass the bar was a mildly sexier topic. So Mm -hmm. that's kind of how I ended up doing that. But I didn't really do a lot of research or anything like that. And this is way back in 2006. So there wasn't really a lot of great material as to kind of what business you're supposed to start. But the big thing was talking about what you know, more or less. How much was this? Was it a course? Was it a book? Yeah, it was a physical book that I sold with some bonuses and things like that. And I sold it for about $150. This was back in the day where I think Dan Kennedy and people like that would say, yeah, you want to send people physical products in the mail because that's better. You're going to get better stick rate and it's a better experience, et cetera, et cetera. And this is before online courses were considered to be at high value. This is when people mainly were selling eBooks and physical information products. Okay, cool. So you create this book, this course, how to pass the bar exam. Did it do well enough where you're like, wow, there's legs here. Like I can really make Maybe it's not specifically with this product, but there's a lot of money here. There's a lot of opportunity here. Like how long did it take for you to realize that? After about six months, I had one summer where I did really, really well because I was focused on the California bar exam only because that's the one that I took. And that one is in July. So the people buy these products in the summer. So it would have been the summer of 2007. That was the one summer I did really, I mean, for me, really well. I probably maybe made that total of two or $3,000 mm-hmm. in sales. And I was like, that was pretty good because you know what I mean? I was making a ton more than that in my lawyer job. That was real like, oh, wow, this is a real thing. And yeah, unfortunately, that was my peak of that product. I tried out a few other things. And then my first real success that really allowed me to quit my job was actually about a year later when I did this project in the relationship space. Mm-hmm. So how did that come about? You went from how to pass the bar exam to then the relationship space. Where did that opportunity come from? Yeah, it was kind of a genesis of a few things, bringing me way back to the early days. So i have been working pretty hard with this bar exam program. And then I just came to the conclusion that the market just wasn't big enough. And these people were a little bit difficult to reach. And there was mm-hmm. other pause for that business. And so then I decided that I wanted to get involved in another niche. There's two people that I actually ended up partnering with One of them was one of my good friends who is in the martial arts space. And both of these guys knew that I was doing a lot of marketing and that I was doing this for a while. And the other one was one of my good friends who was a dating coach. And essentially, I ended up partnering with the two of them more or less at the same time. And I thought that this martial arts business was going to be a total home run, that I was going to make a million dollars. This guy had a really big list. There was a lot of opportunity there, I thought. I wasn't actually quite as optimistic about this dating project, but the market speaks, you know, you got to ship things and see what happens. But what ended up happening was I ended up doing this first launch with the martial arts one, which didn't really do anything too exciting. But then the one in the dating space, this relationship project, that's the one that actually did quite well. And then I ended up more or less going all in on the relationship project. And that's the one that allowed me to really quit my job and become the online entrepreneur that I am today. So you had these connections with these friends in the martial arts and the dating space, right? They knew what you were working on and did it just naturally evolve into, hey, let's try something together? Or was it something that you approached them? We were pretty good friends. And with the one in the martial arts space, it was kind of more my idea. Mm -hmm. And then the other one in the dating space, kind of knew in the back of my mind that I could help him. I was just always just hesitant to work together. I just felt weird about that for the friendship. But then when he needed some help with some marketing, he asked one of his friends, like, I need some help with marketing. Who should I have helped me? And that person said, oh, you should talk to Ron. Ron would probably be a good person. Then he asked, and we ended up going for it. And that's what ended up happening. Yeah, I guess the big thing here is that my first projects were always me being the behind the scenes person. So somebody else being the front facing expert. And I was the person who was doing the marketing and running the business. Amazing. So now you do 150K in revenue with that launch in the relationship for the dating space. And you start doing monthly launches to grow that. 
I'm assuming you're getting a process dialed in, you're getting more experience. And is it safe to say that was your first big win in the launch space, in the marketing space? Exactly. We did this launch at the end of 2008, and that kind of gave us that initial momentum. And then we released a membership site, and that would have been around a couple months later. And then we actually did a big launch for this $700 course, which was actually really successful. That would have been about April of 2009. And we just released a bunch of other programs for the rest of 2009. I spent a little less than a year on the dating business, and I was multitasking. I was working as a lawyer, and I was uh, working in that business. I didn't realize that you were still um, working as a lawyer. I was doing a lot of work in my office for my dating business, but I still had that job. Yeah, exactly. But I quit my job in, 2000, in September of 2009. Then the business actually really took off after that. And then it ended up generating millions in revenue over the years. And that was, again, my first real big success. Awesome. Okay. So you do millions in sales. You leave your job in September of 2009. The next pivot that you made, according to my notes, is going from dating to the dog training space. What was happening? Why that pivot? So there's a few reasons there. To be honest, some of the stuff is a little bit sleazy. You know, we were teaching men how to meet women. So I don't want to get into details about that. We had done really, really well over the years, but that business had definitely reached a plateau. We were kind of stuck more or less in the upper six figure mark that we couldn't figure out how to get past it. Mm -hmm. And I kind of got this point where like we were doing these monthly promotions But it really was kind of like hamster wheel. Like it really was kind of the example of creating a job for yourself where it was like, for us to make money, we're going to have to do a monthly promotion. Mainly for those reasons, and I'm sure a few others, that business was not that appealing to me. I really wanted to have a business that was more or less dependent on cold traffic. I just decided that's what I wanted to do. I want to have a business that I wasn't relying on affiliates, have infinite scale essentially. And so after researching quite a few different niches and markets, I ended up going to the dog training space and making that pivot. So did you go that. out on your own or did you have another partner for the dog training space? This one I did on my own. And I actually um, ended up using my mother. You know, she's older. She would have been about in her late seventies when I started this project. And she just happened to be pretty much the exact same avatar as the people that buy dog training products. <laughs> so it turned out to be really awesome. We created Bev the Shih Tzu gal, who was kind of the pen name, the character, the front person of this business. And then I essentially had other people to actually create the books and videos and things like that mm-hmm. where I did the marketing and stuff. So when you decided to go dog training, what was the thought process behind that? Why did you pick that market? Was it solely because you saw your mom as the ideal <laughs> avatar? Or you thought, you know, that, yep, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I had researched a lot of different niches mm-hmm. and this was actually with the help of a mentor as well. I figured out that there was so much traffic there that I had this vision that I'm going to get one dog read to $10,000 a month, and I'm just going to duplicate that system. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to have this machine that prints money. I looked at it. It wasn't very competitive. It was very scalable. So that's why I ended up getting into that. And to be honest, the uh, punchline to this is that I did build that business into a successful business. I still have that business. It actually runs pretty much on autopilot and makes me a nice income. This vision of <laughs> having 100 sites that do $10,000 a month, I unfortunately did not hit that goal. Because what I ended up finding was it was a lot more difficult than I was expecting. And with the benefit of hindsight, it's not as good of a market as I thought it would be. I don't know if we need to get into that. but we No, no. That's, that. Yeah, it's fine. But I was more curious, why did you pick that market? Why specifically did you? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it, was, it was pretty much for mercenary reasons. To be honest. <laughs> like, yeah, I, mean, I thought it was a good opportunity. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I love it, man. I love it. It's funny because I've heard of a couple of case study examples in the dog training space. Like I think Jeff Walk, one of his poster child testimonials was in the dog training space. And I'm just going off of memory. And this is like two or three years ago. So I don't even know if that's completely accurate. And I think Frank Kern, I, mean, I don't know if Frank Kern was in dog training too. Or he was yeah, in- he was. This is like in the early 2000s. Yes. That, that yeah. Was- yeah. Which is fascinating. I mean, that's now three different people that I've heard in the dog training space. So it's got to be <laughs> something there. <laughs> so, I mean, clearly you... Well, no. And I do have a friend who actually, he has a multi-million dollar business in the dog training space. So it can be good. The only, again, we don't, I don't want to get into the details just because we don't have enough time. But yep. to, I'll just give people here a super tip. Experts, if you're listening to this, I highly discourage you from going to the dog training space. I'm <laughs> saying this as a favor to you. You're better off going in other spaces. I'll tell you why. Okay. The reason why you want to go into other spaces versus dog training is because typically the person that buys dog training products, they're only going to be with you for about three months. And the most amount of money that you're going to get from them is about $50. So there's just better niches to be at, better, easier, and you'll make more money. 
Yeah, the lifetime value of the customer is not worth the effort. Yet. Exactly. Awesome. Okay, cool. So you start the dog training space. You still have that business running, still making you money, which is cool. But eventually you pivot and you start working with Ryan Levesque, who, for those who may not be super familiar with the digital marketing space, he's one of the forefront leaders in his methodology, very big name. So how did you get turned on to Ryan? And ultimately, how did that opportunity come up? Yeah, so I had actually hired Ryan as my coach. This was back in 2012. So this was before the mm-hmm. Ryan Levesque that we all know. Early in my career, back when I was into the Dan Kennedy days, I got actually into this guy, Glenn Livingston, who mm-hmm. is, if you know, he's the original survey research guy, and he was actually Ryan Levesque's original mentor. And I was always really fascinated with Glenn's stuff, and I really wanted to learn from Glenn. But unfortunately, his coaching at the time was very expensive. I couldn't afford it. So I figured out that Ryan was Glenn's top student. And so I essentially emailed Ryan out of the blue one day. So I ended up hiring as my coach. So we essentially worked together for quite a few years, basically from the middle of 2012 to 2015 or 16. So it was quite a while. So long story short, I actually knew Ryan's methodology probably better than anyone at the time. And Mm -hmm. when he was kind of blowing up late 2014, early 2015, first he actually asked me to help out coach his mastermind members because he was launching this mastermind. And then it was just a progression of events where first he asked me to be his coach, then he asked me to run one of his launches, and then he asked me to be his marketing director. And that's how it ends up happening. Mark Ryan is awesome. So grateful for him. I learned a lot working with him. And so that's kind of how I ended up working with him. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is this kind of when you started to get recognized as a launch pro, like somebody who gets it, who gets not just the logistics behind it, but where the real money is made as both of us know, was really in marketing strategy, right? I mean, is this where you've yeah, been? Yeah. So early on, I didn't really become known as a launch pro, more or less until I kind of stopped working with Ryan. People who knew me through Ryan's world while I was working with him, they just saw me as this kind of like behind the scenes marketing genius type guy, not mm-hmm. specifically so much for launches. Like at that time, I still would talk about some of his other methodologies, like his ask method and copy and other types of things. Does that make sense? Yep, it does. So to bring this all full circle, so that was in the past, and then you worked with a couple other clients on their launches, and now you're really, you're coming out of the woodworks, and you're becoming known as, I don't know if you want to call yourself a guru, other people have dubbed you as the launch king. Do you have a launch plan for any of your own products, or what's upcoming for you? Yeah, well, thanks for asking. So I actually am planning on raising my own visibility more in the near future. I have a book that I'm currently writing which hopefully will be coming out around the middle of August. And so there'll be kind of a little mini launch for that. And then towards the end of the year, I'll probably be doing some other bigger things as well. What's the name of the book? (laughs) The working title, a subject to change is Heroic Profits, How to Make a Fortune While Saving the World. Nice. (laughs) I love it, man. I love it. Thank you. So that's coming out in August. I'll be anxiously awaiting the launch strategy for that book. But yeah, man. So what I love about your story is you started out as a lawyer, which I think is fascinating because so many of us, especially in this day and age of opportunity really being everywhere and it seemed you're a rebel in a sense, you always had your eyes open for new things that interest you that could benefit you, right? Going from being a lawyer and working in consumer law and debt settlement to creating first info product after learning from Dan Kennedy, how to pass the bar exam. Then you go into relationship and dating and the martial arts space and then dog training. And then that led to working with a marketing consultant. That's how you met Ryan Levesque. And he brought you more into the fold of his company and working with his mastermind clients, then ultimately being marketing director. And that led to other clients that you work with. And you're on to the next stage in your professional career. But like what is fascinating about this is like you jumped around from niche to niche to niche and you leveraged specifically like, okay, in the dog training space, you saw your mom as the ideal avatar, right? And in your first venture in the how to pass the bar exam, you took your own experience, your own expertise, and you leveraged that into your first product. And it's like, man, there's so much opportunity out there that even if you want to pivot into a brand new space, it's completely possible with zero experience. You didn't have any experience in dog training. So what did you do? You took your marketing principles that you'd learned from your previous experiences. And anyway, I find it fascinating because in the world, I want people to understand that the limits of what you think are possible, like you don't need to have 
necessarily a background in experience to work in a brand new space. You just have to be creative and figure out where is that connection? Okay, you want to enter the dog training market? Where is that connection inside that market? Oh, perfect. My mom happens to be the ideal avatar, right? Want to get in the dating space? Oh, okay, cool. Well, maybe I have friends in that space and let me figure out how I can help them. But that's what I gathered from your story. Cool. That's awesome. There's a CD that I listen to. I always hear these words in my head very often. I can't remember who said it. One of these experts said, use the resources you have. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You always have some resources. Use the resources you have and you'll be in really, really good shape. I guess that's what I've been doing for my entire career. Yeah. And it's like six degrees of separation, which I think that's actually reduced now with the world and the internet of things and how connected we are to everything and everyone. I'm working with a client right now, and he is in the career development market for big four accounting firms. And one of the main things that he teaches people is how to get connected with somebody who works at the big four. And he goes, you're way more connected than you think. Just getting your foot in the door into new opportunities and new spaces is you would be surprised if you really started to dig deep and to think about how you could be possibly connected and to create those opportunities. You're a lot closer than you think. That, that's where I'll leave it. So. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I have one more note on that. And yeah. totally agree with that. And if you look at the people that accelerate the fastest, I mean, really the thing that they have is they just don't care. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They're willing to just go talk to that big person and make a meeting with big person X that you're talking about, or they're willing to put themselves out as a super expert and have that confidence that they're awesome. Other people might be like, oh, you need a lot more credibility or you need a lot more experience to do that. So yeah, the more you're willing to just go for it, the better off you're going to be. In the maybe risky business, there's this famous scene where Tom Cruise says, you know, sometimes you just got to say F it and make your move. That's kind of like... (laughs) I love it, Ron. All right, man. So where can people connect with you? Where can people follow you to learn more about your upcoming book launch, to learn more about what you do and to stay in touch with you? Yeah. So probably the best thing for them to do is follow me on Facebook. My name is Ron Reich. You can go to my, to my website. Go to actually ronreich.com forward slash gift. I have a special, I believe it's a 60 second profit boosting checklist that people can get access to. And I think between those two things, they'll be able to track me down and connect with me. Amazing, dude. So let's drop the name of your book one more time. It's Heroic Profits. What was the last part of that? The working title? How to Make a Fortune While Saving the World. Heroic Profits, How to Make a Fortune While Saving the World. That's amazing. I love that title. (laughs) I love that title. So Ron, man, I had a blast. I love what you're doing. Happy to support your cause. Uh, I would love to learn more about your upcoming book launch and figure out ways that I can help support you during that. But for those listening right now, please connect with Ron. Let him know that you heard him on Experts Unleashed. He's a brilliant dude, a brilliant marketer. Follow him on Facebook because he's always sharing tips and strategies for really just, I don't want to say general marketing because it's not necessarily specific to launches either because one of Ron's superpowers is marketing strategy and how to approach the market, which is it's unsexy to sell, but it is the most valuable asset that you can have on the marketing team. Even more valuable than the details of putting together a launch or the details of putting together a webinar, the angles and the strategy of how you approach the market, that is what's going to make or break any sort of campaign. So Ron, I appreciate you. I appreciate your time and super smart guy. Glad that we connected. And for everyone on this podcast, we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and we look forward to giving you the next one. Now, if you want additional trainings and content outside of the podcast, I release exclusive video trainings on my Experts Unleashed YouTube channel. And if you'd like to come hang out with thousands of other fellow experts, join our Facebook group community where we do hangouts and webinars to help support you in your journey. Finally, if you'd like my personal help to develop, launch, or scale your business, contact me directly for private consulting opportunities to see if any spots are available. And you can find all of the information above at expertsunleashed.com.